I got a real gun and real bullets this time, old Jimbo. So why don't you just back up, huh? Smiley, what do you want? I want a coat. No! I want the coat. Okay, I work too long for that coat. I won't... Hey, Jimmy, let me out of here. Jimmy, it's, come on, it's smiling. You know me, I'm just kidding around. This whole building is going to be demolished. You hear them up there? They're going to demolish this place in half an hour. Sorry, the building, the whole, the whole my God, what, somebody, somebody. Nicole, I'm not at all sure when I'll be at the studio today, if at all. Oh, Geraldine, I really think you should stay at home. Raven will definitely be needing you there. She certainly will. She's been through a terrible time. Far worse than I imagined. Well, if there's anything I can do for you, either there or at the studio, please let me know. Just keep holding down the fort at WMON, and I'll try to hold it down here. Although it's not going to be easy. Why, what do you mean? Well, it's a long story, and I'm not at all Geraldine! sure of the ending. Excuse me, dear. I must go now. We'll talk Geraldine! later. Geraldine! Raven, what is it? What's the matter? I forgot. I forgot to tell you. Uh, no, I told you yesterday. Um, Jim Diedrichson, we have to tell him that Smiley Wilson told me that he uh, that the, the, the building was going to be uh, uh, blown up and he's, he's locked in there and he might be killed. God, we must call the police. But it, it was supposed to happen at 10 o'clock. It might be too late. We'll call them anyway. Oh, God. I don't know if I can take any more of this. Yes, Derek, of course I understand. No, no, I'm sure that she will be more than glad to cooperate as soon as she gets some rest. All right, and thank you very much for your consideration. Goodbye. Oh, it's bad news, isn't it? The police already know about this Smiley Wilson person. Apparently, Jim Diedrichson called them before. Oh, God, it's too late. No. Isn't it? Yes, Raven. It's... Hours too late. What? Did they find Smiley Wilson's body? No, they haven't. They're searching through the rubble right this very minute. Oh, God, this is horrible! Now, Raven, please. I don't want you to have any sense of guilt about this. The man brought it on himself. I know, he scared me to death. He kept trying to get my mink coat. Don't tell me he did all of this for a mink coat. Oh, well, believe me, uh, this mink coat was much more valuable than you think. What is that? Twenty million dollars. My dear. I know, it's crazy. I've been carrying around twenty million dollars like it's pocket change. What in heaven's name did you intend to do with all of this? I was going to run away to South America. Oh, that's why you went to New York. And that's why you were at the mercy of those dreadful people. Yes, Nora Fulton's friends. And she knew all the time I didn't even have to leave the country. It's a wonder you got away at all. Wasn't there something about a policeman? He wasn't really a policeman. He was Smiley Wilson's brother, Hector Wilson. And that's what I can't believe about this whole thing. Two of them. Hector Wilson and Jim Diedrichson have both saved my life, which reminds me. I have got to call Jim Diedrichson. What for? Because I want to find out if he knows anything more about uh, Smiley Wilson. He'll probably be at Gavin's old number, right? Hello. Jim? Uh, no, he's not here right now. Can I take a message? Uh, the painter. Oh, uh, uh, tell him Raven Whitney called. Okay, does he have your number? Huh. 
Yeah, where have you been? Oh, uh, there was an accident. Somebody I knew was in a, a building that was being demolished. So I thought I'd help the rescue crew out. Did you find him? No, it was really strange. I didn't find a trace in that whole pile of rock. I'm sorry. Was he a close friend? <laughs> no, he's more like a close enemy. Look, I won't take up very much of your time. If it's okay, I'm just gonna go up and shower and change. Hey, it won't bother me in the least. I'm not getting anything done anyway. <sighs> That's Mother's Helper in the third, my buddy in the fourth, and, uh, yeah, Heimlich Maneuver in the fifth. Uh, make that last one across the board, okay? Okay, then, uh, yes, Mrs. Schuster, I'll send him up as soon as he arrives. Hi, Miss Travis. Hello, Oscar. I didn't know Mrs. Schuster was back from Florida so soon. Uh, she just flew in from uh, Hialeah. Say, uh, you're back awfully early today. Did you forget something? No, as a matter of fact, my work day is over. Got to the studio at 7, started taping the show at 8. Boy, must be nice to be a big TV star. Hey, if you ever need a doorman on your show. Well, I don't know what a doorman would do in a children's show. Well, doormen help kids all the time, don't they? You know, you may have given me an idea. Heimlich maneuver. Hi, Oscar. Ah, hello. How'd you do at the track yesterday? Oh, I had a great day. I almost broke even. Good for you. Yeah, <laughs> but I expect to do a lot better this afternoon. Viva, I had this dream last night. I, I saw all these colored numbers flashing in the sky. I think they were post positions. Sounds fascinating. Mm. Oscar, hmm? you think if I took you out to lunch at the coffee shop, you could tell me the numbers too? Well, sure. Why not? But, uh, you know, like I said, I can't guarantee anything. Uh, you know? Things must have really gone smoothly this morning for you to be home so early. Oh, they did. The kids made it all possible. They were just wonderful. In fact, we won't even have to edit the tape. That's great. Mm. How'd the spelling bee turn out? It was cute. Actually, she was cute. The character's being played by Betsy Lambretta. Uh, which reminds me, Oscar just gave me an idea. What do you think of a character named Mr. Doorman? You're not going to take Oscar away from us, are you? No, no. I just had this idea about a doorman whose costume is a door with, like, a doorknob and a key. Doorman. Doorman, get it? <laughs> I love it. It sounds great. I think the kids will like it, too. I, um, I also had some bad news this morning. Did you know Kelly has decided to go back to Rome? Yes, I did, actually. I just, I feel so awful about it because we were so close, and, and now we're just starting to be friends again, and he's leaving. Well, he needed a change, I guess. Plus, I'm sure he wanted to be back with his family. No, I can't blame him for that. I'm just being selfish, that's all. I'll miss him. So how did you know he was going to be gone? Because Geraldine called me earlier this morning to say she's not going to be in. And for a very good reason, Jody. Raven is back home. Oh, oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad this whole thing is over with now. You know, I was surprised because a lot of smart people got mixed up in a really dumb scam. Yep, I know, but apparently she's home now, safe and sound. Good. Well, that's a lot of news for one morning, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's my job. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you the most important news of all. What's that? I meant to tell you earlier today, but you went out of the house so early. Mm, I had an early call. Well, Miles and I had a late call last night. Guess who dropped in on us uninvited? I don't know. I give up. Grace Endicott. Grace? What did she want? Oddly enough, she wanted to give you a birthday present. How did she even know it was my birthday tomorrow? And wh why does she want to give me a gift? Apparently, they're still feeling guilty about that robbery and want to make it up. But there is a catch to this birthday present. You have to sit for it. I what? They want to give you a portrait, Jody. Your own portrait. Thanks, Chad. That feels a lot better. Hey, no problem for me. Well, I promised I'd stay out of your hair in the morning, though. Hey, I still think of this as your place, you know. No, no. 
You're paying half the rent. Well, I'll get out of your way now. Hey, you're not going back to the excavation. No, I think they'd probably call the rescue off. Thanks. See ya. Oh, I'm here to see Chad. Thank you. Excuse me. Hello, my boy. How are you doing? Well, the studio's great and the light's perfect, but uh, the artist leaves something to be desired. Yes, and the artist's friend knows exactly what that is. Do you? Yes, Chad, I definitely do. What you need is inspiration. And I've come to bring you some. I was sort of hoping for a roast beef sandwich. Oh. Do you remember that uh, portrait commission I spoke to you about? You mean Jody? The assignment is yours. Grace made all the arrangements last night. Are you serious? <laughs> we can place a call to the lovely young lady right now and make an appointment for her first sitting. Ah, at last I see a sparkle in the artist's eye. But well, what do you know? I, I, I just can't believe it. I thought she'd never go for it, especially since... Ga oh, wait a minute, what about Gavin Wiley? And what about that envelope you showed me the yes, other day? Yes, I was just thinking about that myself. Well, in fact, we can kill two birds with one telephone call. Hello? Mrs. Cavanaugh? Hello, this is Dwight Endicott. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, Mr. Endicott. I'm so glad you called. I wanted to thank you for the generous offer that you and your daughter have made. Oh, believe me, nothing could give us greater pleasure than making this little gift. You see, it gives us a chance to do something for two young people we like and admire, your sister and our young friend, Chad Sutherland. Uh, well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Endicott, uh, Jody doesn't know all the details of your offer. She doesn't know who the artist is yet. Wait, what was that? Oh, you, the, the, young, the young man is a fine portraitist. He draws very, very well. Oh, I have no doubt of that. His still life is exquisite. Chad is doing this portrait? Y yes, she's right here. Just a minute. Uh, Jody, Mr. Endicott would like to Did speak you know to you. This? Hello. Hello, Jody. I do hope you're pleased about this. I'm calling to find out when you can come in for your first sitting. Um, Mr. Endicott, I am really very grateful, but I just don't know if I'm going to have the time to sit for a portrait. Nonsense, my dear. Of course you do. Chad will be very accommodating to your schedule, I promise you. Oh, well, just the same. Besides, you'll need to keep yourself occupied while that boyfriend of yours is out of town. Gavin isn't going out of town. Ah, but you see, I've just received a letter from a friend of mine. He runs the Playhouse in Cincinnati. The Playhouse is going to present a brand new musical, and Gavin is going to direct it. I don't understand him. He never said anything to me about directing a musical. Because I haven't told him yet. You're the first one to know. Isn't that wonderful news? Yeah, of course it is. Wonderful. So you see, it all works out just perfectly for both of you. For all three of you. So according to the dream, this is the horse right here. Heimlich Maneuver. Gosh, you really have a system set up, don't you, Oscar? Well, like I said, it's not exactly foolproof. If it was foolproof, I wouldn't be a doormat. Of course, girls do like a man in uh, uniform. Oh, I know what you mean, though. Mm. Gosh, I hope someday I'll strike it rich, and maybe I'll have a penthouse of my own. You know, I don't think I've ever even seen a penthouse. Have you? Oh, sure. Seen the cabin or penthouse lots of times. Really? Hmm. Do you think you could show it to me? I mean, when nobody's home. Oh, no. I couldn't do that. I'm... Oh, come no, on. No, no, I mean, I just couldn't. Oscar, just for two minutes. No. Come on. Oh, no. just a peek. Please. Honey, I can't do that. I'd lose my job. Oh, Oscar, you wouldn't lose your job. Not for just a peek. No. Please, Oscar. No. Pretty please, with sugar on top? God, could I use one of these? Help yourself, Nora. Still the perfect gentleman, aren't you, Spencer? This meeting was your idea. What do you want? Well, I just want to know what's happening. I mean, you were the last one to leave the house. What's going on? I don't really know. I left just before Mrs. Whitney came back. Spencer, what's going to happen? I mean, is Mrs. Whitney going to have us all arrested? Mrs. Whitney isn't going to be Mrs. Whitney very much longer. What? Well, now the masquerade party's over, all the masks have to come off, Nora. 
Will you please tell me what you're talking about? The maskers weren't the only ones doing the pretending. In fact, Raven Whitney was married to the biggest pretender of them all, a man named Jefferson Brown. Who's he? Oh, he was a man who called himself Skylar Whitney after he thought the original was neatly packed in ice. He had his face changed and passed himself off as a young multimillionaire. <laughs> That's impossible. He did fool everyone for a long time. We had to even wait until he was dead before we got at the truth. Well, you can't fool everyone. I mean, some people would know the difference. No, nobody knew Whitney well enough for that. You're wrong. One person did. Gunther. Right, Gunther worked for him for a long time. No imposter could fool Gunther for more than one minute. Well, there's only one other answer then. Gunther must have known about the deception. That's a lie. How dare you say that to me? It's the only explanation. Either he was fooled or he was in on it. And as I remember Gunther, he'd work with the devil if there was money in it, just like some other people I know. I don't want your damn drink. That's all you have to say to me. Wait a minute, Nora. You haven't heard the best part of the story yet. What's that? In a few minutes, the real Skylar Whitney is going to be meeting the fake Mrs. Whitney. Raven, the best thing you can do for yourself is to sleep. I don't think the full reaction to this whole thing has set in as yet. I'm surprised I didn't have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> but I'm so cold. Is the air conditioner on? No, you may have a slight fever, and that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I think I just need to sleep. I didn't sleep very well last night. Please try, dear. Geraldine. Yes? They're going to take it all away from me, aren't they? Raven, try not to think of anything right now. Just try to sleep. He's a very unusual man, a very dedicated man. Someone with a great deal more patience than, than I have. Yes, I have seen that quality in him, as well as the quality of loyalty at times. Oh, yes, indeed. It took him more than a year to get what was necessary to prove who I am. You do know who I am, Geraldine, don't you? Yes, my dear, I know who you are. And I've accepted it as fact. Spencer realized, of course, that Raven would deny it to her dying breath. That's why he urged me to be so cautious, and that's why he planned carefully. But I don't understand why Spencer would take part in this nightmarish scheme to deceive her. Why would he do such a terrible thing? Well, he didn't really take part in it, as I understand. He took advantage of an existing situation to get a uh, statement, you might almost call it, a confession from Raven. Would you like to hear it? Very well. to a drink. Not at all. Thank you. This is going to be a terrible shock for her. The only thing she knows is that the other man's deception was discovered. She knows nothing about you.
frustrated days pass without sight the edge of night 